My dear friends, welcome to this series of talks on Lenten season. The first word of God coming in my mind and which was almost the first teaching of Jesus according to Mark chapter 115 which said this is the fulfillment of time kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe in the good news this is the fulfillment of time kingdom of God is at hand repent believe in the good news there are five points in this one sentence which was a inaugurating announcement of Jesus according to Mark. This was the first proclamation of Jesus. And the main theme and the central point of that first proclamation of Jesus was repent. My dear friends, this is what we are going to hear this whole Lenten season. Repent. Repent, repentance in its core of that, heart of that is metanoia, turn back to God. But we have heard this in several places in the whole Bible. We know in the Old Testament several times the prophets call for repentance. In Jeremiah chapter 2.13 and all says, My people have done double sin. And in Isaiah chapter 1.15 to 18 we heard, Even if your sins are red like crimson, I shall make it white as snow. Come, come, let us talk. And John the Baptist, this was same word, John the Baptist was also telling, repent. Now Jesus say, repent. Then after the passion, death and resurrection on the day of Pentecost, St. Peter stood up and say, repent. Let us take these three repents. Three. What is the difference? These days, we are becoming more and more spiritually understanding this aspect of coming to the Lord understanding the meaning of repentance, understanding what is sin, understanding what is salvation, passion, all these things. In this aspect, it would be very good if we know these three levels of repentance. The first preaching of repentance was preached by John the Baptist. But John the Baptist cannot take away our sin. <laughs> he came as a forerunner of the Messiah. His baptism was a baptism of repentance. In fact, it is to make the people aware about their sins. But by knowing their sins, they cannot come out from their sins. A person can come out from the sin only through a savior. Only through Jesus Christ. So the first announcement of the repentance is only to aware about your wrongdoings. What are your wrongdoings? So we have all the commandments. The Ten Commandments, these Ten Commandments are more elaborated and making the people 
more and more more and more aware about what is sin so saint paul says in romans chapter 3 in romans chapter 3 commandments give um, chapter 320 romans chapter 320 says for no human being will be justified in the sight by the works of the law since through law through commandments comes knowledge of sin knowledge of sin but that's important too so these days we will have in our liturgical calendar teaching about the old commandments then this call for repentance then teaching of the new commandments and then how you will be justified how you will be justified so the first part of repentance by john the baptist is only that you must become aware about your sin you must become aware about the commandments you must repent but john the baptist cannot take away the sin so he was not sent to take away the sin he was sent to announce this proclaim this and he also said i baptize you with water but there is someone coming behind me he will baptize you with the holy spirit so he himself is telling it is you have to focus not upon me you have to focus on the one who is coming behind me he said i am not even worthy to untie his sandals means i am nothing comparing to his magnanimity his infinite nature his mercy his compassion his omnipotence and so that made an expectation an expectation who is that going to come and with that expectation comes jesus who says this is the fulfillment of time kingdom of god is at hand repent now this repentance is completely different than what john the baptist was preaching this repentance is spoken by the person who has come to take away our sins John the Baptist lead the people to commandments and the sin look at your sin that is wrong but Jesus comes and lead the people to look at me i have come i am your savior Jesus is leading the people to father God is your father. He is full of mercy and compassion. He has come. He has sent me to help you. Now this is what Isaiah said in chapter 40, comfort, comfort my people. To give consolation and comfort. That is the kingdom of God. But this Jesus began to preach, <laughs> but he, at that time of preaching, he is not even able to give this. Because these three years of Jesus' preaching was only a preparation. He did not give this salvation to anybody during that time. That's very interesting. That is what the third announcement of repentance. That was announced by Peter 
on the day of Pentecost. That is the real repentance today we as Christians have to focus on. So these three levels of repentance we must understand. When Jesus proclaimed the repentance, he called certain points there that we will explain later. Important point there is believe in the good news. John the Baptist told them to believe in the commandments and think about your sins. But Jesus says, believe in the good news. And now Peter says, that Jesus whom you crucified is the Savior. So Peter's announcement of repentance comes after the fulfillment of time. <laughs> after Jesus did the mystery of salvation by offering himself as a living sacrifice. A victim. He offered himself as a victim. As a living sacrifice. And his blood. His blood has brought us the justification and salvation. From paragraph 1000. 900, 1992, 1992, Catechism of the Catholic Church give us this beautiful meaning. What means justification? What Christ has done, what Christ has brought is a justification. 1992. Justification has been merited for us by the passion of Christ who offered himself on the cross as a living victim, holy and pleasing to God and whose blood has become the instrument of atonement for the sins of all men. So this is Attained after the passion, death and resurrection. Therefore, the announcement what was made by Peter is our final experience of the salvific experience. So in these days of Lent and season, we will have to think about these three levels of repentance. Now, Focusing on the centrality of Jesus' teaching. Pope Francis talking about the holiness. Pope Francis often mentioned about turn to Jesus. He said in his apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et exultate, rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. This is a beautiful teaching on holiness. How can an ordinary person be holy? What is the basis of holiness? And the third chapter of that is dedicated to beautifully express that look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, which says, in the light of the master, gaudete et exultate, rejoice and be glad. The papal teaching on how can a man be holy. There can be any number of theories about what constitutes holiness with various explanations and distinctions. Such reflections may be useful, but nothing is more enlightening than turning to Jesus. There you go, there you go, there you go. Turning to Jesus' words and seeing his way of teaching the truth. 
that is why the holy spirit inspired me to begin this session from jesus own words this is the fulfillment of time kingdom of god is at hand believe in the good news and pope francis says jesus explained with great simplicity <laughs> what it means to be holy when he gave us the beatitudes matthew chapter 5 3 to 12 luke chapter 20 luke chapter 6 20 to 23 the beatitudes are like a christian's identity card <laughs> So if anyone asks what must one do to be a good christian so this can be a very good thinking in this whole lenten season what must one do to be a good christian the answer is clear we have to do each in our own way what jesus told us in the sermon on the mount in the beatitudes we find a portrait of the master which we are called to reflect in our daily life the beatitude begins with blessed the word happy or blessed this becomes a synonym for holy it expresses the fact that those faithful to god and his word by their self giving gain true happiness so our life when we repent and turn to jesus our life will be holy our life will be blessed jesus said you are blessed he did not say you will be blessed <laughs> that's a point So that is what we have to understand during this whole lenten season. Although we are sinners, we are also blessed people. Jesus has not yet accomplished the salvific act of passion death and resurrection. Before that he was standing in the mountain of sermon wherein so many people were there none of them were holy <laughs> but jesus said blessed are you so we must understand jesus is you point in our life metanoia means turn to that jesus turn to god fulfillment of time now i will explain these five points mark chapter 115 says five points in one word of god what is first is fulfillment of time kingdom of god is at hand second third is repent that is the middle point repent fourth is believe <laughs> Fifth is good news. In fact, in order to experience that blessedness, this fulfillment has to happen. I will explain what means by that fulfillment. That is our theme. The Lenten season begins towards a fulfillment. So that is what Jesus says first word this is the fulfillment of time in order to have that fulfillment you must know that already kingdom of god is in you kingdom of god is at hand kingdom of god has come that is the presence of jesus in the midst of the people that is why jesus say blessed are you he did not say you will be blessed in latin mass there is a preface of the mass which says different prefaces are there 
when I say you will remember. You have heard it many times. That is almost like this. O oh Lord, through your incarnation you have reconciled us with the Father. Remember? Through your passion you cancelled our sins. Mm -hmm. Can you believe this? Through your passion you cancelled our sins. Through your resurrection you gave us new life. Through your ascension you opened heaven for us. Therefore, with all angels and choirs of angels, we sing Hosanna. Now you know where it is. So, in our understanding of kingdom of God, it's very important that kingdom of God has come. Kingdom of God is already within us. In Luke chapter 17, 21, Jesus said, kingdom of God, don't look here and there. <laughs> kingdom of God is already among you. And then in the footnote it is written, the among you also can be translated as within you. 17, Luke 17, 21. 21. Behold, here it is, or there. Nor will, no one will say, behold, here it is, nor there. For, behold, the kingdom of God is in midst of you. Kingdom of God is within you. So, this is what Jesus say. The time is fulfilled, kingdom of God is at hand. But now, what is this kingdom? <laughs> what is this kingdom? What does it mean that kingdom of God is at hand? That's a big thing, big thing. To experience that, you must repent. You must turn to God. You must turn away from your sinful inclination. You must turn away from your worldly pleasures. You must turn away from your unredeemed nature turn to God turn to your savior but how believe what the good news so then fulfillment of time kingdom of God is at hand repent believe good news so this whole land and season these five points we are we are doing in a very elaborate way towards a fulfillment at the time of resurrection on the Easter night. But where it should begin? Good news. Hearing the good news. When we spend more time, time, more time listening to the good news, the good news is the proclamation of Jesus' own words, Jesus' own merciful act, Jesus' explanation about the mercy and compassion of the Father who has come to save us. That is the good news. And when we learn that good news, we have to believe it. When we believe the good news, then we receive, then we receive fulfillment. When, then we receive fulfillment. Pope Francis, in another papal teaching, that is, that is, Christus vivit, Christ is alive. He said, Christ save you. The second great truth is that Christ, out of love, sacrificed himself completely in order to save you. We must know what is the kerygma. The basic part of the kerygma is Christ has come. He has already accomplished everything. So my dear friends, 
in this beginning of the London season, this one word with its five important school of thinking, fulfillment of time, kingdom of God, repentance, believe, hearing the good news. Let us meditate this again and again. Let us focus that three levels of repentance. That is the central point. Repentance proclaimed by John the Baptist. Repentance proclaimed by Jesus. Repentance proclaimed by Peter after the passion, death and resurrection. And now I pray. Let us recollect. Let us thank and praise God. We really come into this recollecting atmosphere. Although we heard all these things many times. Every time there is a possibility to renew our understanding. When the perfect things comes, the imperfect pass away. Every age group. During this London season, we are called to repent. We are called to understand the mystery of the gospel. We are called to experience the kingdom of God within us. We are called to make our life holy. Because that is the will of God, our holiness. And this holiness... As Pope Francis says, is offered to every human being, no matter whatever may be the religion, caste and creed. It's a call for everybody. So my dear friends, during this Lenten season, let us think about which are the areas we need this holiness. Don't be afraid. He is ready to forgive us. He says, not only one time, not only seven times, 70 times seven. He is full of mercy and compassion. The kingdom of God is not a joy of eating and drinking. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So let us focus on those words of Jesus. Blessed are you. Kingdom of God is at hand. Come. Come. Come to me. All those who are heavy laden. You may be heavy laden with your sins. You may be heavy laden with your difficulties. But in this season of land, he is very near, he is with you, blessed are you.